Hi, I'm Frank Gotcha Voice, and I'm going to read to you from this book for Refugee Week. This is The Unforgotten Coats, which I wrote quite some time ago. Uh, this book was inspired by a true story of someone that I met, uh, a girl called Michelle. This is a photograph of her. I'm going to share screen. Um, hopefully, you can see that. That's Michelle. Um, she's the one on the left of the picture. And she was hugely, hugely popular in, in Liverpool. She led the Lord Mayor's Parade. But uh, her family didn't win their case and she was sent back and her family was sent back. And so this, and the children in her class at school were absolutely devastated. And most of all, because uh, when they went to school the next morning, she had left her coat in the cloakroom. So just one coat left in the cloakroom and that was Miss Shields' coat. Um, so this book was inspired by her story. It's not her story because it's up to Miss Shields to tell her own story and I'm sure she'll do it brilliantly when the time comes. Uh, so this is my story. In my story, it's about two boys called Ch uh, Chingis and Nergui. And it starts off with, it's about a set of photographs because the boys have a, a set of photographs with them and there's a kind of a mystery about what those photographs are. This is the first photograph. And the girl in the middle of the photograph is called Julie and she's our narrator. So let's go. I can tell you when this photograph was taken. It was the second week of the summer term. During morning break, Mimi spotted two kids, a big one and a little one, the big one holding the little one's hand, staring through the railings of the playground. The little one was wearing a furry hat and they had identical coats, mad coats, long sort of dressing gowny type coats with fur inside. But any coat would have looked mad because the sun was beating down and the tarmac in the car park was melting and everyone else was wearing t-shirts. Mimi went over and said, what are you two looking at? The big one put his finger on his lips and shushed her and said, pay attention to your teacher. And he pointed at Mrs. Spendlove. And the very minute she did, she blew her whistle for the end of break as though he knew she was going to do it. When we were all lined up, somehow these two were standing right behind me. And I was looking down at the littlest one who had his hat pulled right down over his eyes. He looked really uncomfortable. I wanted to fix it for him, but the big one put his hand under my chin and turned my head away. Don't look at him, he said. He was asking for a slap, quite honestly. But before I could do anything about it, Mrs. Spendler was walking us into class. The two boys went straight to the back and the little one made himself at home in what was supposedly my seat. I stood there, staring straight at him, thinking he would take the hint, but he never did. Mrs. Spendlove said, everyone, I'd like you all to say a big hello to a new face in our class. A happy new face, I hope. This is Chingus. And everyone said hello, except me, because I said, and what about this other one, Miss? What's he called? She hadn't noticed the little one until then. Oh, Chingus, she said, I'm afraid your little brother isn't in this class. He's in Miss Hoyle's class just along the way. No, said Chingus. My little brother is in this class. Look, he is sitting here next to me. And everyone laughed at that, except Mrs. Spendler. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, she said, looking embarrassed. I mean, he belongs in Mrs. Hoyle's class. She was flapping her hands at the rest of us, mortified, because she thought we were laughing at him and that it was her fault. But I was standing next to him, and I could see he had not made a mistake. He was just digging in. Julie, will you show Chingus's brother to Miss Hoyle's class? I certainly would. For one thing, I wanted my seat back. As soon as I stepped towards the little one, though, the big one put his hand up right in my face and said, no, excuse me, no, he must stay with me. I am bound to take care of him. I must protect him and he must stay with me. Well, it doesn't really work like that, Chingis, said Miss Spendlove. For one thing, he's in Miss Hoyle's class and she'll protect him. And besides, we are nice, so he won't need protecting. He wasn't even listening. He just took out some pencils and settled down to do a bit of drawing. Mrs. Spendlove opened her laptop and poked around for a while. Ah, she said. She was looking for the little one's name. You need to go to a different class. Could... And she started trying to spell out this unbelievable name, syllable by syllable. Before she got to the third syllable, Chingis looked up again and said, no, again, no, just like that. It was the second time he'd said no to her. Once might be a mistake. Twice was game on. We were witnessing a struggle for power. Mrs. Spendlove made the first play. Excuse me, she said. Call him Nergui said that's easier for you which is cheek in her face when you think about it telling mrs spendler what to do telling her she would not be up to the job of pronouncing someone's real name mrs spendler slapped that down 
Well, that's not what I've got here, she said. And she tried to spell out the long name again. Chingus stood up. She looked him in the eye. He said, please. Please was good. Please was some kind of stand down. Please was points to her. She closed the laptop really, really slowly and said, OK, just for today, you can stay in this class, Nergui. Chingus said thank you and sat back down. And it looked like victory to Mrs. Spendlove, except that this somehow this kid had ended up with everything he wanted. There was his little brother sitting next to him, being called some unofficial name in my chair. Maybe Mrs. Spendlove sensed this and she decided to push it. So if you take your hat off, Nergui, she said, we'll get started. The kid didn't move and neither did Chingis. They both just sat there with, what are you going to do about it, faces on. She tried again. I'm afraid you have to take your hat off, Nergui. No, said Chingis. Now everyone looked at Mrs. Spendlow. We can't have people wearing hats in class, Chingis. Now everybody looked at Chingis. Everyone looked at Mrs. Spendlow. Everyone looked at Chingis. This was like watching some kind of high tension game of tennis. It will be dangerous to take off my brother's hat. How can it be dangerous to take off his hat? Is his head not securely fastened to his neck? She got a laugh for that and the laugh gave her a kind of edge. Not dangerous for him, said Chingis, but maybe dangerous for you. Mrs. Spendlove frowned. Was he threatening us? Was he threatening us? If I take off his hat, I don't know what he's going to do. He was definitely threatening us. He was definitely threatening all of us with his little brother. Chingis, said Mrs. Spendlove. Chingis said, when you need your eagle to be calm, what do you do? I don't know, said Mrs. Spendlow, and she looked around the class. Did anyone know? Why would anyone know? Of course, he said. You cover its eyes with a hood. When you want your eagle to fly and to kill, you take off its hood. My brother is my eagle. With his hood on, he may be calm, but without his hood, I don't know what he'll do. This was year six. We had been in school for six years, and until that moment, I thought I had learned everything I would ever need to learn. I knew how to work out the volume of a cube. I knew who had painted the sunflowers. I knew the history of St. Lucia. I knew about the lines of Tudors and the lines of symmetry and the importance of eating five portions of fruit or vegetable a day. But in all that time, no one had ever mentioned eagle calming. I had never had a single lesson in eagle calming. I had never even heard the subject of eagle calming mentioned. I had no idea that a person in this world might need eagle calming skills. And in that moment, I felt my own ignorance spread out behind me like a pair of wings. And every single thing I didn't know yet was like a feather on those wings, tugging at the air and restless to fly. I hope you enjoy the book, I hope you enjoy the week, and I hope you fill the world with love and kindness. Goodbye.